flips it off to Will Coleman for the tomahawk. Oh, oh my! Will Coleman off the run. He dominated on the court. Now he brings his talent to the microphone. Welcome to the Will Coleman Show, a Bluff City Media audio podcast. Stepping up to the microphone is the big man himself, Will Coleman. Now, let's get to the show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, it's it's been a, a wild ride for Memphis, Tennessee, obviously, as we all know. Um, but we're going to go against the grain here, and we're going to leave, you know, Mr. Morant and all that stuff out this episode today. Obviously, he's he's been the headline for numerous days, numerous days, numerous days, but uh, we're going to kind of bypass that. And as y'all can see, I have a very, very, very special guest, very, very special friend, teammate, entrepreneur, coach, all the things under the sun, man. Super cool dude, man. We got Willie Kemp here, man. Uh, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here. Uh, excited, super excited to talk to you today. But cool, I'm doing cool. very well. Cool, 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 man. So kind of just, so kind of just, man. Just, I mean, obviously, you in Memphis, Tennessee. It's not too many people that aren't going to know who Willie Kemp is. But just kind of, you know, for the viewers that are time are chiming in for the first time, man. Kind of just let them know where you're from. You know, what you got going on. Just who you are as a person. You know, life after basketball, stuff like that, man. Um, well, pe- people know me, uh, Willie Kemp. I'm originally from Bolivar, Tennessee, about mm-hmm. 45 minutes east of Memphis. Very small town, very small town, a basketball town. Uh, three-time state champion, uh, won, won state state tournament uh, two times while I was at Bolivar. Uh, came to University of Memphis. Um, had a had a great. I would say I had a good career. You know, it could have been better. You know. Right. Uh, had a, had a good career. Uh, met some lifelong friends here right. uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, got done playing here at the University of Memphis. Played professional about ten years. Played overseas all over. Pull it up, something. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I need to start over. You get yeah, me? Yeah. We say. We say. <laughs> okay. We say. Okay. We yeah. Good. But uh, like I said, I played professional about ten years. Uh, played all over Europe. Had a pretty good career. Got done playing uh, basketball. Uh, really didn't know what I wanted to do, you right. know, and I'm pretty sure it's like that with a lot of basketball players, mm-hmm. at least probably 75, 80 percent of them, you know, yeah. because we, yeah. we we play basketball all our life, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and we focus on that all the time, you know what I'm right. saying, and we we really don't, you know, think about life after basketball, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and so, you know, I still wanted to be around the sport, right. you know, I don't I didn't know if it wanted to be uh, coaching, uh, marketing, uh, right. aging, fine, whatever it may be, I still wanted to be around the, uh, the mm-hmm. game, you know right, what right, I'm right. saying? And so, you know, just uh, got into coaching, you know, got into right. coaching. And, and man, I, I, uh, the last couple of years, I, I just done fell in love with it. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's my goal now is, man, to be on the sideline and, and, and coaching and at the highest level. Okay, so is there is there a certain capacity at is it is it is it head coaching, assistant coaching, or it doesn't matter? Like, uh, 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 head coaching, you know, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. like I said, uh, right right now, you know, being being a high school head coach, where this this uh, will be my first year right. at the high school level. I'm I'm currently at Whitehaven High School, right. right. So this this my first year at Whitehaven. Um, you know, it, it, it's going to be a challenge, mm-hmm. you know, because you know. Whitehaven is, you know, one of the, you know, talked about schools in the city of Memphis, and it's a sports right. school, you right. know, and uh, it's one of the biggest schools in the city. So, you know, uh, you know, the goal is, you know, to be a head coach, and you right. know, I, I done, you know, done, done became a head coach, you know, and you know, uh, man, I wanna, I wanna compete with the best, and I wanna become right. the best. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know it's a lot of work to be done, and and I'm willing to put that work in. Right, right, right. And that was, I'm, you know, I just, just living here in Memphis. I'm not too in tune with it, but. Morrell came out of Whitehaven, didn't he? Matthew Morrell went to Ole Miss. Was that? Uh, yes, yes, okay, I okay, think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I think he did. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, I think he did. Okay. 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 He did. He did. Can okay. Cool. Um. And have you have you gotten a chance to meet everybody? Because I know you know coming off a of season and then you know summertime, 
you know, it's probably a little different, you know, trying to get with your kids and stuff. Have you met everybody in yeah, school? Yeah, and yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't met uh, you know, all the players because, you know, we are preparing for the uh the camps, you know, right. all the uh, all the high school camps mm -hmm. will be in June mm -hmm. because that's the dead period for AAU. Right, right, right. So uh we actually, you know, getting ready to uh, prepare to to go to some summer camps. So, you know, we've been uh meeting everybody. Okay. Cool, 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 man. And what made you kinda just talk to me a little bit about your experience when you first got into or thought you when you I'm assuming when you initially thought about getting into it, is that when you started working with Penny and just kind of went on and start learning from him and those when, guys when I first got into it um I was at uh I called a good friend of mine uh Scotty Scotty Robinson yeah yeah yeah, sure yeah, 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 yeah 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 so uh Scotty he was a he was a, a basketball manager when I was playing at University of Memphis mm -hmm. and uh now he's coaching and uh he was the head coach at, at Kyieville Right, you know, and so I, I reached out to him and you know told him I was thinking about you know uh, getting into coaching, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like, "Why don't you you know come out here and help and help help me out?" You right. know what I'm saying? And so I I I went out there and did it, you know, just to, you know see how things was, mm -hmm. get my foot wet, and you know see if it's something that I really really wanted to do. Right. And um, that year that I went out there with Scotty, we we made it to the state tournament. It was. It was a good year, and uh, I mean, I felt you know that was something that I really want to do. Right. And so uh, I went uh, pursue uh, pursue went on to be a grad graduate graduate assistant at University of Memphis. Right, right, right. And so uh, I was there for one year. Then I became an assistant coach at Lamar Owen. Okay. This past season, and mm -hmm. uh, this year I'm at Whitehaven as a head coach. Man, you making moves, man, and you moving, you moving quick, and I'm sure, man, and I'm sure a lot of people. I, I just I can't help but 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 think that you know when you're around these kids, man, the respect just it just comes because I mean you got somebody that has played at a very very high level and was as talented as a lot of the guys that you played with. It, it just that, that I can't help but understand or, or think that that will correlate and the respect comes from your players versus your regular Joe that come in to, to coach a team versus maybe we got Willie Kemp. Because when your name comes up, it's in the hat with a lot of, I mean, a lot of people as far as play, mm -hmm. the way you've played, and who you've played with. I mean, you know, I, I'm not too familiar with Bolivar. I know it's a it's a great basketball school, but I know you went to high school with Chisholm, Wayne mm -hmm. Chisholm, um, went to Tennessee. Yeah. Obviously, you come out of school, then you you playing, playing with Derrick Rose, you playing with Tyreek, you know, Evans and – and things like that are happening. So, when your name is entered into a hat, you don't have any choice but to, but to look at Willie Kemp. And I don't think, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think that's that's super dope. Um, talk to me a little bit about those experiences, even playing with. I mean, because you got big guns on every roster that you're playing. Like, I mean, you and Wayne Chisholm on the same court is. I mean, it's 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 otherworldly, man. So, talk to us a little bit about how your time went at Bolivar and what that was like being in a town that's just heavily touted for basketball. It was great, you know. And when when I was playing at Bolivar, I mean, every game was sold out. Every game, no matter where we went, you mm -hmm. know, on the road, at home, and and like I said earlier, Bolivar is a small town, and so right. when when we play. You know, everything was closing. You right, know, right, right. Everybody had to be at their game. Right. And, you know, and, and playing with Wayne, it was, it was, you know, it was amazing. You know, you playing with somebody that's six nine, six ten, mm -hmm. they can run, they can jump, they mm -hmm. can can do it all. Just a natural born athlete. You know, right, right. It, it was great playing with him. It was amazing. You know, had a had a great time. You know, we we uh could have won the state four years, you know, all right. four years, you know, but I, you know, I didn't play with Wayne, but two years, but, right, right, right. you know, outside of, you know, him not being there, we still had pretty good players because mm -hmm. like I said, Bolivar is a basketball town. It's always talent down there on right. the basketball court, but mm -hmm. it was great, you know, playing with Wayne, you know, and then come here and, you know, you can't forget I play with Weird Coleman now. That's, you know, no, just, <laughs> I, it, which is it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's just yeah, I but no, it. we we uh, at, at Memphis, man, it was it was great. You know, we we. I didn't lose a conference game until my senior year. So we won, I think it was like 65 or something straight conference. It was something yeah, crazy. Yeah. You know, we won, we won three years in a row. I didn't mm -hmm. lose a conference game. 
And you know, uh, you know, playing here at Memphis, man, play with some some great guys, man, some some talented guys that right. you know played at the highest level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the guys that didn't play at the highest level that went overseas, the guys like myself, well, you know, guys that you know, it's pretty good. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I, I I do feel like you know everything is is timing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know if you can play, you're gonna get there. But you right. know, I feel like you know everything is you know. Everybody have their own path, you right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. And, you know, of course, everybody want to, you know, get to the highest level, which is mm -hmm. the NBA. But, you know, you got some pretty good guys overseas right, right, playing right. basketball. Yeah. And, and, you know, professional making money, still doing what they love to do. Right. But, man, right. I, I done played with some some amazing some amazing guys, you know, this mm -hmm. with this, this this basketball stuff. Yeah, yeah. I And, and, just, and just, you know, being be, – getting on the, the tail end of it because, you know, I, I experienced – Memphis after after Cal. Mm -hmm. So kind of explain or kind of talk through the difference between, you know, how 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 much of a difference it was. Because Cal recruited me, obviously left and went to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Cal was just a cutthroat, love to win, hard-nosed type of guy. I mean, and Cal would cuss your grandmom out if he had to. He didn't care. But then you had Pastner, who was just the polar opposite. Kind of talk about the culture shock, if there was any for you when Cal left and then Pastner stayed. Because Pastner was on the coaching staff when Cal was there, right? Exactly. So kind of explain how that changed for you as a player and the experience going into that. When I came to Memphis, so, you know, like I said, I did, you know, play for Cal my mm -hmm. first three years. And like you said, Cal, he, he want to win by any means necessary. Right. You know, if he if 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 your grandmother playing against you on the mm -hmm. court, you know he don't care. Right, right, right. You know he he want to win every game. You know if he can beat you by fifty, he gonna beat you by fifty. Right. And I, you know, I I don't have anything bad to say about Cal. Right, right. Love him, love him, love him to death. You know, I still talk to him to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, if I need some or whatever, you know, he need anything, we we still communicate right, to right. this day. Um, you know, and and, and with with Cal. You know, going to Kentucky, you know, a lot of people was angry, you know, yeah. but you know, I can't I can't I can't be mad at someone to, you know, better themselves. You know, right. Kentucky it's the place where everybody that's, wanna that's be. That's the old Mecca, man. For college yeah. basketball, that's yeah. the old Mecca. It, you know, so I, I couldn't be mad at him. You know, of course right. I, you know, still wanted to play for him, you know, because mm -hmm. I came here to play for him. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, we still gotta la lace them shoes up and, right. and go play. You know what I'm saying? And you know, once he Decided that he was going to Kentucky. You know, everybody. You know, is are we going to transfer? Or are we going to, you know, stay here and play for Memphis? We don't know who the coach going to be, but you know, we had built a real foundation here in, at, at University of Memphis. And so, you know, with the class that came in with with myself or uh, Donnell Mack, Pierre Niles, you know, guys like that. You know, we just decided that we was going to stay. You know right. what I'm saying? And like we we still didn't know who the coach was gonna be, but you mm -hmm. know we was like we we all about Memphis. We gonna stay here and we gonna right. we gonna rock out. Okay, you know. And so we had uh, very much uh, respect for uh, for coach Coach Passner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Another guy that I still talk to the, uh, to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, I seen him. Uh, you know, I went to one of his games this uh, this past season at Georgia Tech. Uh, took my guys from Lemoyne up there. So uh, with Passner coming in, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, if you have an assistant coach, you know, I don't know if I'm going to respect this guy. Yeah, you right. know, I don't know what he's going to be like, you know, mm -hmm. as a head coach. But, man, I learned so much from Passner. And, right. you know, just, man, respect, you know, and, you know, how to be a, how to be a, a real, you know, a man. You right. know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Passner, he, he, he don't curse. You know, yeah. he, you know, he don't drink caffeine, uh -uh. you know, and so just learned, learned all of that from him. And, man, uh, Coach Passner, he, he's a great head coach, and uh, I have the utmost respect for him. Yeah, Coach Coach P. Coach P was great, and I don't – man, I can't remember. And I tell everybody all the time, my favorite Coach Passner story, we was all uh, – I think that was the year Willie was there. We was there, and I think we were playing – I can't remember who we were playing, but we get into a huddle – and it's like a minute and a half left, and Coach Pastner was getting on to us because we were complaining, and he's in a huddle, and Coach Pastner's like, everybody need to stop your bitching. And <laughs> the, the game on the line, and everybody's in a we, – we need to be drawing up a play, and we need to be trying to figure out what's going on with the, with the, with the game because we need to win this game. Um, and, you know, being completely transparent, it was some controversial times, you know, because they come off – you know, Kyle come off – 
game stumping people by 20, 30 every game in, in mm-hmm. conference, and we and we losing games that technically we shouldn't be losing. So mm-hmm. this was a, a big game we needed to win, and so we spent the whole media time out screaming about debating whether or not if bitching was a cuss word or not, <laughs> and we burnt the whole time out, and it went from there. Um, but Willie, talk to me about, and I talk to Pastor all the time about, and you talk to him as much, and you you probably wait because you've known him way way longer. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about, and I'm curious to know. Talk to me about, you know, when 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 everything, when all the dust settled, Cal left and Passion was there, and you had a bunch of guys coming in. You had no idea who they were. Was it still like even for the foundational guys like you, Robert Sally, Donnell Mack, that's just been winning games? Was it ever like? Was that attitude still the same, or is it like, yeah, we not finna win a damn game. We don't know who the hell coming in here. Like, we just gonna make the, we gonna do the best we can. Cause you had, we had, I mean, everybody, you know, Wesley was there. Yeah. Um. So you had your guys, but you had DJ Stephens couldn't even do a single push up when he first got there. Mm-hmm. I mean, never. I mean, just was no one knew who he was. Obviously, we had Malik Thomas walk yeah. on. Yeah. Angel Garcia, who was playing at thirty five percent because his knee. I mean, it, our roster was pretty banged up. We still went to the NIT, but talk to me how you felt about your guys and then you had guys coming in that you've literally never heard of before. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with you. You know, <laughs> when I first came to Memphis, I was a starter. You know, yeah. I was, you know, with Cal, you know, he started out his point guards, mm-hmm. the incoming, incoming freshman. Right. So coming to Memphis, I was a starter, led the team to to the lead eight. Mm-hmm. Had a great year. You know what I'm saying? And you know, D- Darius Washington was there the year before right. I got there. Mm-hmm. And so he left uh, right after his freshman year. So, you know, coming, you know, was a uh, was a starter, had a great year. And so he, you know, had the meeting with Cal after the season. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was like, Man, you know, I really want you to stay, you know, but I'm recruiting this this point guard by the name of Derrick Rose, mm-hmm. a pretty pretty good guy, you know, pr- on the court, pretty good. So, but you know, if we can get him, you know, it's a possibility with everybody coming back, we can, you know, win a national championship. And I'm all about winning, right? You know, I'm all about winning. Whatever I can do to to win, that's what I'm about. Mm-hmm. And you know, and so I knew, you know, once he was coming in, if he's the number one player in the nation and he right. played point guard. You know, maybe I'm gonna have to come off the bench. So, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a problem with that because right. I felt if we can win a national championship, it, it's it's good for everybody. You mm-hmm. know, myself and you know, right, myself. Right, right. So, um, when Derrick Rose came in, you know, we 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 made it to the national. Should have won it, you mm-hmm. know, but we we end up losing. So, you know, so you know, my third year. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I'm gonna you know get my spot back, you right. know. Mm-hmm. But then you know he say we got a guy named Tyreek Evans coming in. Mm-hmm. So by that time, I'm like, oh man, like it's really right. it's over with for yeah, me. Yeah, like, yeah. like should I transfer? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, you know, I'm not one of those type of persons to to get up and run. You right, know what right, I'm right. saying? I want to mm-hmm. face it. I want to face it. You know, advers- mm-hmm. adversity. So you know, I, I stayed. You know, and my third year was you know my my worst worst year. You know what I'm saying? And so didn't didn't have a good year. Right. You know, minutes was was down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so. You know, and, and that after that year, you know, that's when he said he was leaving. So all I'm thinking in my mind, oh, I'm back starting. Right, 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 right. You right. know, and mm-hmm. so I'm like, I'm starting, you know. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to stay here, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. like, shoot, sure, I don't know who finna be the coach, but I know it. It, it, it if, if it's not Cal, I know that we ain't bringing the number one point guard right, in the right, nation. Right, so right. when I play point guard, so, you know, I was thinking in my mind, like, you know, I'm back starting, you know, because right. every basketball player want to play. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just just being honest. Everybody right. want to be on the floor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's all I'm thinking. You know, I'm I'm finna be back playing. I I, I don't give a damn who finna be the right, coach. Right, right, right. right you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. you know, and you know, once I get, you know, my guys that's already here. You know, mm-hmm. you know, like they were some pretty good guys. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I yeah. mean, they wouldn't, you know. Five stars or nothing like that, right, but right. you know they was. But they we, were still some yeah, killers. I, you know, yeah. I don't think people and, don't need to sleep on Don. I mean, just yeah. what we had. I mean, we still had some killers exactly, on that team. Exactly. And so you know, with the you know, I, I knew we was gonna be able to compete with uh, with other teams. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know you know if we was gonna go to the national championship or you know make a, a final four run or whatever. Right. But you know, I still feel like everybody got to lace them up. And mm-hmm. so you know. 
that was our, you know, that's what all we was talking about, man. We finna, we finna be back playing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and once they said, you know, Pastor was the coach, and we knew Pastor, he he know us. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we knew, you know, he was going, you know, we had a meeting with him too also. And so, you know, he was, he told all of us he wanted us to stay. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, he was going, you know, rock with us. You right, know right. what I'm saying? And so, I mean, should we was like, should we know the program? We know the city. Mm-hmm. You know, we know the school. You know what I'm saying? We familiar with everything around here, so we was going to stay. And so that's that's really why I stayed, because I knew I was going to be playing. Right, 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 and right, I was back yeah. starting, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah. that was really my reason for staying. Right, 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 right. And then, and, I'm, and then just everybody everybody that, that, that stayed, and I was – I'll say I was extremely – satisfied with with how the season ended um uh, just because i mean for those you know everybody if 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 it didn't have an m on it cal took it <laughs> i mean he he took it and he and that's just what it was and a lot of people hated him for it a lot of people you know were salty about it but i mean that's like that's any guy or any female that got a dream job if they come mm-hmm. knocking you going to take it Right, I, like I don't any coach yeah. that got a chance to coach in the Rupp Arena, you gonna take it, man. I don't exactly. care what you say. I don't care how you feel. Now, could he have done it better? Maybe, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I mean that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. He gonna take that. Yeah, once in a, and we know how Memphis fans is. I mean they, you know, to this day they still rip them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But I mean, there's like you said, anybody, man, Duke, uh, Kentucky, North Carolina. Man, if you 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 get that opportunity, you you right. gotta take it. You right. know what I'm saying? It, mm-hmm. it it don't matter, especially if you you know you trying to become one of the best coaches. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And you know, and you know that th- those are the places where you want to be. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Of course, you know when we when he was here at Memphis, you know everybody you know gave us their best game every single night. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, Memphis, uh, we weren't in a Power Five conference. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Kentucky is a Power Five conference. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, I mean, I can't, I can't get mad at that man for taking that job. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Nah, mm-hmm. that's something that you know I can't do that. And yeah. you know, I, I don't understand, you know, why people, you know, upset. You know, because I mean, you know how Memphis fans is. You know, mm-hmm. we was, we was at the top of the top. You right, know right. what I'm saying? And you know, they was. I'm, I, I can see why they're upset. Right, right, You know, right. and why they, you know, why they ripped them or whatnot. But can't be mad at him for taking that job. You can't. You can't, you can't, and and I and I need a lot of people to understand that. Man. <laughs> I need a lot of people to understand that. I don't, I don't think they get it. But life goes on. Life happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is what it is. We 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 chalk it up, and we keep rolling. Um, Willie, talk to us a little bit, man, about your professional career. Um, you know, some ups, some downs mm-hmm. when you decided to retire. Stop playing, get into coaching, like talk. Because I know there has so many different people have so many different experiences exactly. playing in Europe. Um, talk to us a little bit about yours, man. So when I first when I first got done at Memphis, I just thought overseas were overseas basketball. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was levels to it. Right. You know, I just thought if you get overseas, you overseas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I I had an agent, you know, in the beginning, just you know, he just you know wanted to get me over there to, so he can make some money. Right, 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 right. And you know, my first year, mm-hmm. I end up I, I went to an Arabic country. It was called uh, Tunisia. Yeah. So a lot of people probably never heard of it. Mm-hmm. But that's why I went my first year, and so the teams in Europe don't respect those countries. Right, 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 right. So right. they, they, I mean, they didn't respect that country. You know what I'm saying? So my. Basically, my first year was a waste of time. Mm-hmm. You know, I won a championship and everything over there, right. but they didn't respect that. You know, mm-hmm. had a had pretty good numbers and everything, but you know, and and people know that play ball in Europe. You know, each year you you know yeah. elevate. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a, a good year, a good year somewhere mm-hmm. in Europe. You go bigger and better. Mm-hmm. So I had to start from the bottom. Right. You know, so it was it was like a, a waste of time that first year. So you know the uh you know the second year went to Europe you know yeah. and you know start you know rising up mm-hmm. rising up but I just couldn't get I couldn't get there right, you right. know what I'm saying I couldn't get to where I wanted to mm-hmm. to get to mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying but like I say it still was you know had some okay okay years but I never played in Euro League you know yeah. what I'm saying like you know Euro League is you know yeah. one of the best leagues outside the NBA 
So never got to that league, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Never got to a Euro Cup, you know, that's a step down, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't get to where I wanted to get to. But like I said, still played professional, still, mm-hmm. you know, made made some okay money, but I didn't I didn't get to where I wanted to right, get right, to. Right, right. You know, and then, you know, coming back home, you know, you know, still playing. So I, like I said, a lot of people don't know, you know, why I stopped playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So came back home, um, 20, 2020, it was the pandemic year. Right, right. So um, I was in in Romania. Yep, I was in Romania in, in Bucharest, which is Romania is a is a pretty good league. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So over there, you know, f- familiar with the country, had played in Romania before. So you know the pandemic happened, so I came home. You know, and mm-hmm. and you know I still was you know still was playing at a high level. You know what I'm saying? And so July twenty. July 20, 2020, I got in a car accident. Wow. Yeah, but so a lot of people don't know. So I, I actually broke my hip. You know, see, I don't even know if you know. Yeah, I, I, didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even know that. So I mean, yeah. that's news yeah. to me. Goodness yeah. God. Lee, yeah, okay. So, so a lot right. of, uh, yeah, so it, 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 it was a major, major accident. And so, you know, I broke my hip. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they was like, you know, you're going to be back in, you know, four or five months. You know, it's, it's really... You know okay. you gonna you gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying. So, you know, had the uh, surgery. They put uh, rods, screws, everything in my hip. And so, the doctor came in. He was like, "Man, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, he was like, I, I had the same surgery. You know, the doctor who did my surgery. He said I was a marathon runner, and he was like, I had to stop running because I didn't want to put all that pounding on my hip and mm. need a hip replacement." You know what I'm saying? And I know people had a hip re- cow had a hip replacement. And I know those hip replacements ain't no joke. And so uh I couldn't Ooh. walk. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? And I and, and I had the, you know, he he was honest with me, you know, he said it's not gonna be four or five months, you know, and so because I couldn't walk, I had to learn how to walk again. And for me, you know, able to run now and you know, and and you know, just play mm-hmm. here and there with you guys or right. whatever, still playing the pro am. Or whatever around here in Memphis, you know what I'm saying? Like I still can play like that, but you know, playing at a high level, right, right, right. you know. And I was just like, man, you know, I had to, you know, think about it, you know. And I was like, you know, well, I'm just gonna, you know, go ahead and, you know, retire, you know, mm-hmm. because I I done played overseas ten years, mm-hmm. you know. If I was young in my career, you know, right. I would have I would have been devastated, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But man, I had to learn how to walk again, you know. I remember, I, and it's funny because I never knew why, but I yeah. remember. Mm-hmm. Remember, you know, seeing you from time to time over at that Campbell, Excel, yeah, Excel Campbell, Campbell that, Clinic. Yep, I would see mm-hmm. you over there all the time. And I'm like, is he? You know, in my mind, I'm like, is he coming out of retirement? Yeah, is he, is he about to play again? But whole time you were rehabbing. I was rehabbing for a whole year. I, and then it, 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 I was I wanted to get back so bad because mm-hmm. you know any athlete or, or, or competitive person mm-hmm. you wanna you wanna prove to yourself that you can do it you right. know what I'm saying and, and man when I tell you man I work so hard like man when I tell you every single day right. like in, for a whole year mm-hmm. like Campbell Clinic they said I ain't never seen you know nobody over there you know every day you know mm-hmm. someone do their rehab for four three four months then mm-hmm. you know they they go on but when I tell you I was in that place every day you know just trying to get just to prove to myself man you can you can get back you know what I'm saying and so but in my mind I still you know he was like if you, I, w- I recommend that you don't play, but I can't tell you what to do. But, right. you know, I was just like, man, I'm going to get back and I'm going to play again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That just because I wanted to prove to myself that I can play. But once I got back, you know, you know, I started back playing, you know, just, you know, running. But I couldn't I couldn't move how I was right. moving. You know, right. I wasn't. I wasn't fast how I was, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Lateral moving, it wasn't it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. The jumping wasn't nothing was the same, you know what I'm right. saying? And you know, and it'll flare up on me sometime and it and you know, if I just play for a week straight, mm-hmm. just running every day or whatever, jumping, you know, it it'll it'll flare up on me and it, right. it it just was like I was like, nah, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, just mm-hmm. Just go on, sit down, and man, go on, go right. to the next phase in yeah, life. Yeah. But you know, like I say, this this really the first time in front of a camera that I open up to let people know what yeah, really happens. You know I, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, because like I said, a lot of people, 
you know, they just thought I stopped playing. You know right, what I'm right. saying? But, you know, just, you know, for me able to, you know, walk now and to to run, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm thankful, you know, for, you know, to be here and, and able to still walk and, and you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, run or whatnot. You right, know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, I just decided, you know, just to, you know, stop playing. To, you know, I, I don't even want to go through that again because that that hip is is nothing to play with you know what i'm saying right. and it is it's nothing to play with so so that that hunger that you had to just get back like mm -hmm. i need to get back i need to get back was it was it more so was it more so a pride thing versus actually playing or you just wanted to you know was it was it that thing oh, well i i just want to get back because I know I got the determination and the willpower to do it, or was it like I'm really trying to get back because I really want to play? All, all of them. All of you them. You know, it's. I mean, we, we, us as men, we pray for. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We we very pray for. You know what I'm saying? My my wife tell me that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we got pride. You know what I'm saying? And right. so, you know, I wanted to get back for that, and I also wanted to, you know, to, just to prove to myself that I can, you know, still play. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And because mm -hmm. you know. But it's, it's going to be a time where we can't play no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We can't go out there and guard no 23-year-old. But, yeah. you know, we, we our pride, look, we're we not going to let this young dude just go out here and, and kill us. You right, know right, what I'm right. saying? But but th that was the thing. You know, I, I wanted to prove to myself that I can get out there and play again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I and I had the pride and I couldn't give up. And, and I, didn't, I didn't want... You know, that's why I didn't put it out there, you know, that I had a rig because it was like, ah, he had a rig. Like, and what was he doing? You know what I'm saying? Right, right, this right. and that. Like, that's why he can't play ball no more. He, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He he uh, broke his hip. You know what I'm saying? And I just didn't, you know, I didn't want that. You right, know right, what I'm right. saying? And so, mm -hmm. you know, you know, people don't even know, you know, because I still can, you know, I work my tail off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I still, you know, got out there and, and played in the pro am yeah. tournament. Yeah, just just to, just to clarify, yeah. Ever, just to clarify, Willie Kemp still is a bucket. He still is a floor general, and he still can play. Now, <laughs> I know a lot of y'all probably won't won't be able to see or tell because it was a long time ago from when you know yeah. pre pre car wreck and post. But Willie Kemp still is a bucket. Just wanted to throw that out there and 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 let everybody know. Yeah, and then that's the thing. They they you know. I mean, I, I'm not what I used to be, but you know, I I know the game. You know right, what right, I'm right. saying. And if you know the game, you can you can play it. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Until right. you can't play it no more. You know right. what I'm saying? Of course I can't do what I used to, but you know, I still can get out there and yeah, play. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah. that's what I, you know, my boys at White Haven, they be, you know, talking a lot of junk. So I just have to get out there and show gotta them. Show, you gotta show them day. young bucks sometimes, man. Yeah. You gotta show them young bucks sometimes. Um not, you know, and I wanna throw this out there too, Coach Kemp is also not not only is he coaching his his White Haven team, he will be manning um, and coaching the tournament team that we're all playing together. So when the time comes and we need y'all to vote, vote, vote to make sure we get in that thing, secure our spot, make sure y'all do that. Um, the tournament is a – it used to be $2 million tournament, but, you know, obviously the organization got hip, kind of mm -hmm. saw what it was doing, so now it's $1 million. But $1 million between nine, ten people is a lot mm -hmm. of money. So Coach Kemp will be coaching that, you know, myself – I think Lomax thought, you know, you got mm -hmm. Lomax in there, you got Jeremiah Martin in there, mm -hmm. um, and a couple other people that, that will be. You got Sean Taggart coming out of, you know, Adonis. Yeah, Adonis. Chris. Uh, Chris Crawford. Yeah. Those those are the Memphis guys. And uh, like I said, we're we going to compete. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, those are just the Memphis guys that we just we just named uh, that's going to be on the uh, on the roster. Then we got a, a few more uh, players that's from Memphis. Right. But they didn't play at the University of Memphis. So, they're actually gonna post it here. I think maybe maybe uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday, and we need you know uh, we need all t Tiger Nation behind us. It's gonna be something amazing. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty fun, and so we're gonna go out there and we're gonna compete for Tiger Nation. So we need all you guys to once it come out this week to go out and, and vote for us. But everything you understand it once it come out. Yeah. Um, also, this is some breaking first, news, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, also, well, that you, first round sponsors, sponsors, sponsors. Sponsor, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't never been. I ain't never had a problem begging for some dollars. But that first round is on us. If yeah. we advance to the second round, um, ESPN and everybody else takes care of the rest of the travel, hotels, and stuff like that. But that first round, I've looked, they've released the site locations. Yeah. And I think the closest site location is maybe Kansas. 
Yeah, we we either gonna be we either gonna be in uh, Wichita or we're gonna be in Louisville. So and that's something that, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna talk to, you know, the players that we just named mm-hmm. and we're gonna decide where we gonna go. And again, we're gonna uh I'm glad we have brought that up. I'm just about to pull these names up again and so Will can uh so he can say 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 those some some okay. Tiger favorites, you know so what I'm we, saying? Okay. So so Tigers, we got we got Jeremiah Martin, Adonis Thomas, Alex Lomax, Willie Kemp is coaching, I'll be playing, Sean Tiger to be playing, and Chris Crawford to be playing. So those are the Tiger. That's the Tiger alumni that will be playing, and we got a couple other people that'll yeah. be playing as well. Um, some 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 Memphis homegrown guys yes. that'll be playing on the team. So we'll, we'll have a pretty solid roster, man. Um, so make sure y'all be on the lookout for that. We'll blurb it. We'll put it out there. Votes, votes, votes. And if, you know, again, sponsorships to help us get to either Wichita or Louisville to play some other great alumni teams. Louisville will have an alumni team. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, and an yeah. old rivalry that I think could brew up some 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 viewership and maybe even get some Tiger yeah. fans and on. Also up to Louisville. They, they you know, if we go to uh to Wichita, Kansas, you know, it's two regions in Wichita. Right. Wichita State they got one. Mm-hmm. Well, they hosting both of them, right. but they got one. They got one region, and University of Kansas is okay. the head of the other region. So I mean, so so they. I think what they're trying to do, they trying to put us in the Kansas region. Hey, I mean, you know, and so they tra- they look, trying to make us play them again. If if that could happen, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we'll get some Tiger fans up there for that, man. But y'all make sure y'all be on the lookout for that. We we've got a lot of gems for Lil, well Willie Kemp. Um, I ask all Tiger fans to continue to do what y'all do once Willie make his debut on the sideline at Whitehaven, man. Let's make sure we pack it out. Make sure we show him and his boys some love because it, it take a lot. It take a lot to be a coach, especially, you know, nowadays being able to take time out your schedule away from your home, away from your people. You you spend the majority of your time with, 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 with guys that you don't even know, man. So let's make sure we support, you know, Willie Kemp and, and, and what he got going on over at Whitehaven. Um, Willie, thank you for coming out. Man, I enjoyed it, man. Uh, Anytime uh, you uh, need me, whatever, man, it, it was a pleasure being here today, and uh, I really did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, man. Again, y'all make sure y'all keep up with Willie Kemp. Um, we're going to break here. Once we come back, we'll, 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 we'll chime back in, keeping up with Coleman. And uh, again, Willie Kemp, thank you. Much and, love, uh, man. Much we'll love. We'll see y'all soon. What's up, guys? I'm so excited to announce that we have partnered with Coaching for Literacy, and you can read more about them at coachingforliteracy.org or follow them on social media at Coaching for Literacy. Your subscription to Bluff City NIL is 100% tax deductible because of our partnership together. Thank you for supporting Memphis Tiger student athletes and helping promote the monumental calls of childhood literacy. Very, 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 very heated. Not very heated. I ain't gonna say heated. Very nice. Just you know, always think. Love Willie Kemp, man. That's my boy. That's my guy. Um, he's doing big things. Got a lot of stuff going on. He's now the head coach at Whitehaven. So let's make sure we check him out. Let's make sure we show him love. It's good to see Willie winning, man. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, I- man. Everybody love a good success story, man. Especially after what I didn't know, a tragic car accident. Um, Ended his playing career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of threw me off, Kenny. I, I didn't even know that. No, I know. I could tell it threw you off a little bit. You were like, "Wait a second, <laughs> what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know that, man. I yeah. so so it was it was cool. It was cool to see him. Um, super cool. But here in this segment, you know, I like to bring up a lot of you know not necessarily controversial things, but stuff that it kind of make you think. And and and. Kenny, I, I've just been seeing it everywhere. I, I don't know if it's becoming a thing. I, I don't. And again, every, everybody know me as a person. Everybody know who I, how I feel. Everybody know who I am. Everybody know I love everybody. I love everybody. Race, creed, color, it don't matter. But something has been bothering me, and I don't understand it. 
my bad will i didn't whatever i did i'm sorry <laughs> why are it seems to be a thing now that caucasians are domesticating raccoons you get, get, shut the hell up I, get, yo kenny i swear dog i swear every time i look up on instagram somebody petting playing or tucking in a raccoon in the bed in a house. Can I swear, dog? I bro, promise. Bro. I swear, man. What kind of country bumpkin ass IG pages are you looking I at? Dog. Can I swear, man? I swear, dog. <laughs> it's I'm seeing this and I'm 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 at a loss for words, brother. I I just I need you to send me a link so I can post it in this video. So that, that people aren't thinking that Will Coleman is just straight I'll, tripping. Dog, I'll send a whole Instagram account. I was looking at one before I pulled up. Like, I've been looking at this stuff all week. But, like, specifically, it's a, a page I was looking at today. It's just strictly, like, raccoonism, like, catering to the raccoon, feeding it, petting it, tucking it in for bed. Like, like it's a real dog or a cat. For real. Man. Yeah, you know, can I tell you about my experience with raccoons at my house? You got raccoons at your house? Or, well, like, do they hang out? Like, because I know they kind of scrummage around the trash and kind of wait for scraps and stuff like that. So That's about all I know about them. So we have cats that are outdoor cats at our house. Mm -hmm. And they're neighborhood cats. They kind of just run the neighborhood. They got, like, six or seven houses they go to on, like, three different streets. But their, their bed, their food, everything is at our house. They were mm -hmm. given to us by some neighbors that moved up to the Great White North and didn't want to take them with them. So right. we kept them. And they're great. Faithy and Skittles, they're awesome. But mm -hmm. um, – their food was getting eaten all the time. Like right. I would fill up their food bowl, and it was one of those that had like the dispenser where you could like have some reserves in the on the side, and mm -hmm. they would eat it. And as soon as that kind of went away, it'd fall down. Anyway, so the but the we would I'd come out one day and I'd fill it all the way up to the brim, and then come out the next day and it was completely gone. I had to <laughs> refill it, refill it. This happened numerous times, and I'm I blame the. There's another cat in our neighborhood named Dicka, and I'm like. Mm -hmm. A damn like Coach Ditka? Yeah, like Coach Ditka. Okay. It's a big-ass white cat. Okay. Mean as all hell. Kind of like a bully? Bully, man. Just a okay. bully. Just right. a bully. No one likes bullies. Nobody likes bullies. And so I was always like, man, I'm going to get that cat. So one night, I hear, right. in the garage. And I was like, I ran to the garage door, and I opened it up. Mm -hmm. And there's this big raccoon in the garage eating the cat's bowl, eating the cat's food bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what in the hell? So I go borrow a trap. One of those like nice traps, but I put some peanut butter and I put some different stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Come out the next morning, there were four raccoons in the trap. In my garage. The garage, I put the trap right by the garage, the, the cat door heading out from our garage to the to outside. I put it inside our garage. That means there were four raccoons in my garage overnight. Mm -hmm. So I took it out about 30 miles out because, you know, raccoons, they are, they have a very good sense of direction from what I've read. Yeah. So to, if you don't want them coming back to your spot, you got to mm -hmm. take them way out. So I took them way out to like Piperton, like way out and dumped them off on the side of the highway and they took off into the ravine and found a new home. And anyway, those those raccoons were. It was a it was a mom. It was two kids and a drunk uncle. See, I'm telling you, man, raccoons. People, I don't. But the thing is, I don't know if people are finding these raccoons as babies and then raising them, or like they catching grown raccoons and then just kind of like inviting them in the home and like trying to like change them. Where does Will Where does Will Coleman draw the line in terms of domesticated pets at his house? Where would you Let me ask you this. Are you a cat person? No, nah, I tried to be a cat person one time for the sake of my daughter, but I'm a, I'm a, I, I think I'm allergic to cats, man. Really? Yeah, I think I'm allergic to cats. I had that hasn't been confirmed, but my sinuses do go haywire when I'm around cats. Mm -hmm. So, would you are you a dog person? I I, I want a dog bad. The adopt, actually, Humane Society is like basically giving away dogs. Mm -hmm. Like you pay six bucks and they'll give you a dog because they're at capacity. Yeah, 
I just like I just don't have time for a dog. No, I got you. I don't have time for a dog. Would you? How do you feel about reptiles? Would you bring a lizard or a snake into your house? Not a snake, no. Maybe One, a lizard or like an iguana, something like that. And what's the weirdest animal that you've seen domesticated at like a friend's house or you know growing up, whatever it may be? A squirrel. A squirrel. A squirrel. They had a squirrel in their house. A squirrel in their house. And it was a legit, just with like run, run around, you know, on the people's shoulders or like the people that pick it up to pet it and stuff. They would just sit. It just be in the house. You'd think it want to once it got outside, it run away. But like, I truly do believe. Like, obviously, you know, animals have instincts and stuff. I'm not an animal guy. I'm not Steve or nothing like that. But I feel like if you get an animal at a baby, and you train it to right. whatever you want it to be, it'll think it's a. Right. You know, it's kind of like what they do with elephants. Like when an elephant is a baby, they put a, a, a collar on its leg so it can't run off. And it, it physically can't as a baby uh -huh. with the stake in the thing. But when they get older, their brain is so programmed to, to that chain that even as an adult elephant, even though they can just walk right out that joint, mm. just snap the chain, in their mind they think that they can't go anywhere because they're stuck or that, that chain got them stuck to the ground. And I feel like that happens with any animal. You take a duck, a, a rabbit, or a squirrel, or a raccoon, anything. If you get it as a baby and you feed it and you pet it and you right. bathe it and you train potty train it, it's going to think it belongs in the house. Potty train? I mean, I, do, I don't know if you can potty. Do you put a diaper on it? Like, I don't think anyone has, out of all the accounts I've seen, I don't think anyone has shown how you take care of a raccoon when they need to use the bathroom. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I mean, do you think they like put a diaper on it and then like some baby powder and like I, you know, I, with you wipes know, I don't and know. stuff? Like, do they swaddle the raccoon? What do you? What do you think that? What does that tell you? Like when you see that, what does that tell you about the person when they got a domesticated raccoon I, in their house? I don't. Either they're a really great caretaker, or they're really insane. It's like maybe a bit of both. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, but but I mean, can, is there? Can you? Are you allowed to have any sanity if you're if you choose to have a raccoon as a pet? I question. It makes me question a lot about that person. Like, like, I, do do I want to be friends with this person? Like, would if if a friend of mine I went to their house and they had a, a like let's say a baby raccoon or something? Like, would I would I reconsider my friendship? Probably. So, like, if I pulled up on you, was like, ah, we was about to hang out, and he was like, hey, man, let's go grab a drink. And I was like, man, I can't. I, I, I'll meet you down there. I got to go let my pet raccoon out, then I'll meet you. I got to go let Fifi out the house. Yeah. She's got to go pee pee outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're, oh, Fifi's a dog. No, Fifi's my raccoon. Yeah, yeah. Is it like, all right, bro, you can't go have drinks with us? Like, I feel like that's serial killer kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Like I would be, I would question whether or not my my life was in danger hanging around with that person. Right, right. Yeah, dang. That's all. Yeah, strange. yeah. That's 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 what's that's what's had me in a tizzy this this week because I'm seeing it more and more, and people are reposting and reposting. And what are I, what are the comments? Are the comments like what the hell? Or nah, the comments some people like, like are y'all y'all crazy? Some people, oh my god, so cute. But it's almost like a community mm. of like raccooners. I don't know if that's the correct is word. Is that what they call them, raccooners? I, just, I don't know, but it's kind of, it's almost like Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen that but people don't play first of all, people don't play about their pets. I don't know if you ever seen there, there was a Netflix special that came out. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was like don't mess with my cat or No, nah, it's a serial it, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And this dude is like online tormenting cats. Well, it's a true crime. It's don't F with cats. Is yeah, what yeah it's okay. Called. Yes, 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 yes. Don't F with cats. And this man's tormenting cats. But the amount of people that rally together yeah. to find this dude. Well, I mean, let's be real. The guy turned out to literally be a serial killer. Yeah. yeah. He was a, he was a, a true is a true crime documentary about a serial killer in Canada and they found him. He initially made people's radar. <sighs> Because he posted a video online of him torturing a cat. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like, there are people in this world that would value the life of that cat more than the value of the life of a human being. 100 cats, dogs, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
And in the documentary, you got people. It's crazy. You got people. Yeah, we we saw the internet. We saw the video. Um, he not in the United States because I saw the outlet in the corner. Right. Um, that's about um a half a half an inch big in the video. And yeah. then you got some people zooming in on it. Okay, so he's not in this region of the world because right. it's this, this, and this. Well, look at the way his toilet paper sit on the ring. Mm-hmm. So he got to be European. I mean, it was absolute nuts. And the way people are rallying together to show love for raccoons now is blowing my mind. I think you have stumbled onto a incredibly niche part of the internet that if I could suggest, man, you're my guy. Like I, I care about you. I care about your sanity. Stay away, man. Like yeah, you're I'm, you're dealing with some weirdos on that that side of the. Uh, you know, I'd uh, love to know how you got into that 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 uh deep dive of raccoons. I just, pets. I, I just, I I keep seeing it. I keep seeing it, and I see on my social media, mm. I I see it, and I'm like, why are these people reposting? Like, uh, for example, uh, Chelsea, um, what news channel is it? Chandler. Chelsea Chan- Chelsea Handler, the comedian. No. Oh che- no, Chelsea Chandler here in Memphis. Yes, Fox here thirteen. In Memphis. Fox thirteen. Yeah. I follow on Instagram. Hey, shout out Chelsea Chandler. Good friends with my sister in law. Shorty love raccoons. Hold on. She just repost them. Repost them. They go on her story. She like raccoons. Hold on. For real. We might need to get Chelsea on a phone call here. See if she pick up. Was um, she- uh, straight up. She, I uh, will call in studio. Blah blah blah. Like he said, you love raccoons. Hold on, keep going because I'm gonna message her. Yeah, no, straight up ask her. I, I, you know, and another one of my friends down in uh, Texas now, um, Miss uh, Miss Addie. She love raccoons. Literally, I texted her profile earlier today about some raccoons. And she straight up texted me back and was like, oh, my gosh, I want a raccoon so bad. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's, it, it's, a, it's I guess it's a community for everybody because <laughs> you would never catch me in the group screaming about how I want a raccoon. <laughs> now, I will say the Instagram videos that I see, they do look very cool. They do look very dope. Um, but I just, I, 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 I wouldn't even know. I don't even think there's a manual out there to show you how to care for a raccoon. Like, is there an expert raccoon trainer? I feel like it, I feel like it should be illegal to put a raccoon in your house. Just like it's illegal to put a certain type of monkey in your house. You know, people trying to domesticate or, or make those little, I don't know which type of monkey, but the little tiny ones, the little baby ones that don't get no bigger than, People try and, you know, they keep those as pets. That's illegal for certain <laughs> monkeys in certain countries, apparently. But, like, <laughs> I don't even – anyways. Look. Hey, I've reached out to Chelsea. We'll, let's uh, – I'm waiting for her to respond back. Yeah, you'll, um, have to, you'll have to blow that, tweet it, put something. Because she, she going – I'm telling you, yeah. she going to get back with you. Like, oh, my gosh, I love raccoons. Yeah, we might have to try um, to see if we can get her on this podcast real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get on here, but um, yeah, that's 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 what's been that's what's that's what's been been bothering me for the week, and um, but I'll 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 get to the bottom of it. I'll figure out what this this current you know this wave of raccoon loving has. I, I want to know where it's come from, but <laughs> the way we'll, you say we'll, it, yeah, yeah. raccoon loving. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> I, I digress, but I'm gonna listen. Listen, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it there, and I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into my my bluff city badass. Now I had one in mind, but. Unbeknownst to me, I, I would like to just shift and go ahead and give it to Mr. Willie Kemp. Um, I mean, just talking to him earlier today and just kind of hearing everything he has gone through or everything he had to go through to get to where he is, I feel like that's a true testament to determination, discipline, and just, I mean, just hard work, man. Um, and to hear him talk about what he went through with Cal and Cal constantly recruiting over him and I think that take a lot of – it just takes a lot of – I mean, I, I, I don't even know I don't even know what to give it because, you know, nowadays with the NIL stuff and the transfer portal and all that kind of stuff, I don't think children today will be able to, to last through something like that. Um, but, you know, my, I, I tilt my hat to, to, to Willie Kemp 
and I, you know, give him my Bluff City badass of the week. It was super interesting to hear him talk about, you know, like you talked about him being recruited over two years solid. And obviously, right. listen, can we just be, let's be completely real here. When you have a chance to get a Derrick Rose and a yep. Tyreek Evans, you do that, you right? Do that. Like yeah. you, you, you do definitely that. do that. Yeah. What I appreciated about Will's mentality about it was, man, I'm thinking about leaving or transferring. I started my freshman year and mm -hmm. next two years I'm being recruited over, but these guys are really, really good. So I get it. Mm -hmm. And his response was to not just transfer and go somewhere else. It was to say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor, man. Right, like right, I'm right. going to fight. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I want to win. Right. That right. to me was a, a pretty badass. Uh, a pretty badass mentality to have, yeah, and yeah. I, I think it shows you exactly what what kind of what he's made of, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And a lot of pe a lot of people ain't built like that anymore, cause we've made it so easy to just be able to bounce when times get tough. Um, but it it is what it is, man. Um, you know, Willie's my guy. I love him to death. Wish him nothing but success. I will be in attendance at White Haven when he kicks things off to show him love. So uh, let's make sure we all follow suit and do the same thing for those that are, you know, watching, listening, and, excuse me, that are tuning in. Um, as always, with love, I appreciate y'all tuning in. I appreciate y'all listening. I appreciate y'all watching. Um, Will Coleman, me and Kenny, over and out. Um, we'll see y'all same time next week.